Chers diplômés, distingués invités, mesdames et messieurs, parents et amis, bienvenue, welcome. I am Steve Harvey, Dean of the John Molson School of Business, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this special evening. For our graduates and their families, convocation is a time to celebrate important achievements and to reflect upon the future. Indeed, you are our newest JMSB citizens of the world and leaders of tomorrow. Concordians are proud, JMSB faculty and staff are proud to see you graduate and to wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Félicitations à chacun et à chacune de nos nouveaux diplômés. Now, would everyone please join Mrs. Danielle Pullen, soprano, in singing of O Canada. Je vous invite à entonner avec Madame Danielle Pullen, soprano, notre hymne national, O Canada. Good evening et bonjour. The Persian poet Rumi once said, on a day when the wind is perfect, the sail just needs to open and the world is full of beauty. Today is such a day. Today is indeed a day full of beauty, gratitude and celebration. Aujourd'hui est un jour de joie, d'espérance et de richesse. We gather as a community to celebrate the achievements of you, the graduates, your hopes and dreams for the future. We gather as a university to mark our annual rite of passage and to forge ahead with our dreams and visions. We gather as a community amazed by the potential present in this gathering and the dream for peace and hope for this world. May this indeed be a day of celebrations que ce soit un jour de beauté, de joie et de célébration. Merci. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. Thank you, Reverend. Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, Mr. Chair, Mr. Belsadoum, chers diplômés, distingués invités, mesdames et messieurs. Tout d'abord, félicitations à chacun et à chacune de nos nouveaux diplômés en cette magnifique soirée de réjouissance. I'm so very pleased to be here with you on this very special evening. I know it's a momentous occasion for you, our graduates, and for your families, loved ones, and friends. Today, we acknowledge and celebrate your achievements as graduates, but I think you'll find that after graduation, believe it or not, the best is yet to come. Through trial and error, and I hope through trial and success, you will hone your skills and expertise, adding to the critical mass of higher learning that you've attained here at Concordia. You will reach for your own dreams, and in doing so, contribute to the progress of wider society. Diplômés, je le sais, vous avez 
rédiger des travaux, suivre des examens, parfois devant réconcilier vos études avec des emplois à temps partiel, des responsabilités familiales dans certains cas, des activités parascolaires, du bénévolat peut-être, et des activités sportives. Nos professeurs et notre personnel ont fait tout leur possible pour que vous, nos étudiants et étudiantes, se sentent les bienvenus à Concordia et pour faciliter leur cheminement universitaire. J'espère que nous y sommes parvenus et que nous avons su vous aider à vous préparer à la prochaine étape de votre vie. Now, graduates, as informed and engaged citizens, your generation is poised to make a tremendous beneficial impact on this fast-changing world. The challenges, you know, are significant, whether they are economic, social, technological, political, environmental. You know them well. You will have to be adaptable and resilient, not the followers or the victims of change, but the leaders, the agents of change. Despite the challenges, I think there's much room for optimism. As you've all shown by making it this far, the opportunities for success are apparent and compelling. The value of a university education to you personally and to society is indisputable. I can tell you from personal experience, however, that success is not determined by financial wealth or awards or acclaim or even the approval of your peers. Success, I would suggest, is defined more so by the degree to which you touch people's life and positively affect people in your personal, professional, and civic lives. And wherever you go and whatever you do, the harvest of knowledge, experience, and values that you've gathered here at Concordia will be as relevant for society as you make it. Chers diplômés, je vous dis encore à nouveau bravo et je vous encourage à rêver, à rêver grand, à explorer des choses qui n'existent pas encore puisque, puisque c'est ainsi que vous allez changer le monde et bâtir l'avenir, bâtir votre avenir. I'm happy that we share this meaningful connection through Concordia, and I hope that it becomes part of your lifelong bond with the university and with our community. So I say again, well done and good luck. I, now, I would now like to call upon President Alan Shepard to make his introductory remarks. President Shepard, thank you. Monsieur le Chancelier, Monsieur le Chancelier délégué, Monsieur le Président du Conseil d'administration, members of the Board of Governors, members of the Senate, distinguished guests, colleagues, faculty and staff, friends, and especially the Concordia class of 2012. Bonsoir et bienvenue. It's a great pleasure to see everyone gathered here this evening. Convocation is like so many rituals, such as a wedding, perhaps, that mark a fundamental moment in one's life. It will go by quickly, or if the speeches are long tonight, not so quickly. But it leaves an indelible mark on you for the rest of your life. Graduands, each of you will now always be, always be, a Concordia graduate. I hope you've had a fantastic, life-transforming experience at Concordia. I hope you're proud of your education and I hope you've had fun. You've been fortunate to study in one of Canada's great universities, one of its great business schools, and we've been fortunate to have you making a difference in our community. Ne va de soi que votre cheminement jusqu'à présent aura connu son lot de difficultés, puisque l'éducation implique des changements constants. I know from talking to many alumni that their experiences here at Concordia have enriched their lives. Having been at Concordia only something like 100 days, I am already aware of terrific projects accomplished by our students. One team has devised bacterial approaches to removing styrofoam from the environment, surely something everyone would appreciate. Other groups of students help local enterprises integrate the best sustainable business practices into their operations. We see art produced by our students and alumni all over this beautiful city, public art. 
and another of our undergraduate teams has just won a Canada-wide competition to design and build a scientific satellite. Their Concordia satellite will be launched this coming April. The graduates we are celebrating this evening from our John Molson School of Business are emblematic of Concordia's legacy and leadership of commerce, indeed leadership of society in Quebec and Canada and North America. Universities like Concordia are central institutions in civil society and strong universities are needed now more than ever as we prepare graduates to succeed in a global environment of ideas, professions, and commerce. Concordia is already doing this very well. Depuis plus de 100 ans maintenant, les racines de nos institutions fondatrices ont contribué à la réalisation Québec fort et innovant. Whether it is examining concrete actions to protect human rights, to strengthen health and wellness through exercise, or to develop new environmental practices through genomics and solar research, Concordia's faculty and its students are already globally engaged, and that will only increase. We cannot be an island. Nos étudiants ainsi que nos diplômés ouvrent dans un environnement très compétitif et un marché mondial hyper branché. Universities are built on a paradox. We preserve and transmit what is known to be true, and at the same time, we are driven to criticize what has been known to be true so that we can create new ideas. Il nous faut aussi stimuler l'innovation, l'experimentation et l'entrepreneuriat afin de bien soutenir nos étudiants, nos professeurs et nos chercheurs. At Concordia, we are building on our great foundation by applying our multidisciplinary approach to teaching, learning, and research. There is still much to do, but together maintaining our spirit of open debate and civil discourse, we can continue building a first-rate urban university that is in sync with the needs of the 21st century. Graduates, I'm sure you will cherish this evening. I hope it doesn't pass too quickly. I hope it includes or has included a sumptuous feast with your family and your friends. And I hope you will thank your families and friends for their support of your aspirations and your achievements. We're all privileged to have shared this part of your journey. Je vous invite à demeurer en contact avec Concordia. I offer you all my best wishes for the future. Mon chance et merci. Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Mr. Aldo Bensadun, founder and executive chairman of the Aldo Group. Canadian business leader, philanthropist, visionary, entrepreneur, early advocate for corporate social responsibility, these only begin to describe the passionate and dynamic spirit of our honoree, Mr. Aldo Bensadun. The son of a shoe merchant and grandson of a cobbler, he founded the Aldo Group in 1972. This privately held Montreal-based company is internationally known as a leader in footwear with a reputation for reshaping the industry. Aldo Bensadoun effectue ses études primaires et secondaires en France avant de fréquenter l'Université Cornell et de recevoir un baccalauréat en commerce de l'Université McGill. Grâce à son diplôme, il obtient par un heureux hasard un poste en recherche commerciale chez un détaillant de chaussures locales. Après un certain temps, son intime connaissance de l'industrie de la chaussure 
passion créatrice et son esprit novateur l'inspire à lancer sa propre affaire. Selon M. Bensadoun, les compagnies à succès construisent leur entreprise à partir de leur base fondatrice tout en regardant vers l'avenir. Il croit que pour réussir, il faut comprendre le client et contribuer à son bien-être par les produits et services qu'on offre. Cette philosophie simple mais profonde est la source de l'innovation constante qui caractérise les concepts de vente au détail et les marques de Group Aldo. The Aldo Group operates more than 1,000 retail stores across Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Ireland under four distinct brands, Aldo, call it Spring, Little Burgundy, and Globo. Specializing in footwear and accessories, the Aldo Group is dedicated to the design and production of high-quality, trend-driven, and excessively priced fashion season after season. The Aldo Group has successfully expanded into 76 additional countries with over 600 franchised stores, recently adding new locations in India, Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Mexico, and Vienna. Mr. Bedsadoon is actually actively involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company, along with his wife, Diane, and continues to direct the strategic growth of the business. From the outset, Mr. Bensadoon has had a people-first approach to ensure that every person is afforded the opportunity to reach his or her potential. The Aldo Group, with its focus on human development, has established itself as an industry leader in recognition and incentive programs by acknowledging the distinguished achievements of its people. He indeed has a very extended family, as the people in his life are celebrated every day. Just do an operations tour with him, as I have done, and see the pride and wonderful relationship he has with each and every member of his staff. He has built a magnificent facility, complete with, with athletic facilities, common areas, all to encourage an enriching work environment for his most important asset, his people. In addition to his involvement with various industry associations, such as the Retail Council of Canada, the International Council of Shopping Centers, and the National Retail Federation. He is a board member of Aritzia, a Canadian fashion brand with increasing international and celebrity appeal, and Hope and Cope, a Montreal-based nonprofit organization that has served as a model for its unique psychosocial approach to cancer care. Longtemps avant que le concept de responsabilité sociale de l'entreprise soit connu, Monsieur Bensadoun était résolu à en faire une pierre angulaire de ses affaires, favorisant par ses efforts l'enrichissement des communautés où nous vivons et travaillons. En tant que Canadien pour qui la citoyenneté n'était pas un droit acquis à la naissance, il est reconnaissant des possibilités offertes par ce pays. Il n'est pas rare pour M. Bensadoun, en compagnie de ses collègues et amis, de prendre part à des collectes de fonds et de consacrer bénévolement son temps à des causes d'en vigueur communautaire ou internationale. En effet, qu'il s'agisse de l'éducation, de bien-être collectif, de la médecine ou des arts, redonner a toujours été pour lui un second nature. Le groupe Aldo s'est notamment joint à la lutte contre le sida en 1985, bien avant que ce soit à la mode, devenant l'une des premières entreprises à appuyer ouvertement cette cause. Cet engagement a permis d'amasser plus de 10 millions de dollars en dons destinés à divers organismes 
et ouvre de bénéficence de monde entier. He is the recipient of numerous awards and honors. Among them, he is a companion to the Order of the Business Hall of Fame, Officer of the Order of Canada, a recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal, a Concordia University Award of Distinction, and the recipient of an honorary degree from that other university down the street. <laughs> These are only a selection of Mr. Ben Sedun's many honors, yet he has remained an unpretentious and sincere as ever. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Mr. Aldo Ben Sedun, so that you may confer upon him the degrees of Doctor of Laws Honoris Cosa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to ask Dr. Ben Sodum to offer you his convocation address. Aldo. What's the name of the other university on top? <laughs> Promise I'm not going to mention her name. Um, you're doing things very well here, I can see. Monsieur le Chancelier, Monsieur le Président du Conseil d'Administration, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, invité d'honneur, chers diplômés, parents et amis. Thank you, Chancellor Jack Menard and Mr. Jonathan Winner for those very kind words. Thank you. I'm very honored, grateful, and yet humbled to receive an honorary doctor of law degree from Concordia University. As I stand before you, I recall my graduation ceremony at McGill in 1963. My nervousness, my anxiety, my hopes, and especially my fears of the future. Receiving an ordinary doctorate degree today is pretty easy. Basically, the university calls you, you accept, you say yes, thank you, and here I am. Well, in 1963, well, in 1963, I can tell you, it was not so easy. I had to go through many, many obstacles, and I never thought at the start of my journey that I would graduate from university and even less that would receive an honorary doctor degree today. As you will see, when you reach my age, it is much simpler to understand the obstacle that you had to overcome rather than the obstacle and opportunity that you are facing. You will discover that during your lifetime, days come and go, and every single day is a new day, and every day influences your future. Life journey is not a straight path. You have ups and downs, and you never know what's next. I would like to share my experience and the meandering journey that brought me here today. As Jacques told you, I attended Lycée Henri IV in Paris and received a baccalaureate degree in mathematics. 
fact, it's not Jack, but it's uh, Jonathan that say that, but it's true. I had no idea at the time what I wanted to do in life. Since my brother-in-law, Emile, was finishing a prestigious electrical engineering school in France, and my brother, André, was completing his PhD at Cornell, I follow what I believe would please my parents and friend and apply to Cornell. Well, three months later, I find myself unmotivated, hardly speaking English, within a group of students who, unlike me, were incredibly motivated. At Cornell, I felt completely out of place. I like purpose, passion, and motivation. The Cornell experience lasted a few terms when I finally decided to leave. My family and I were devastated. I had hit a wall, a real brick wall. The road was no longer before me, so to speak. I had completely lost sight of my purpose. In my eyes, I was the shame of my family. I was by far one of the most somber period in my life. What should I do? What to do? C'était le néant complet. On se sent seul, on se sent plus bas que plus bas. My father at the time had the discipline to put a stop to my monthly student allowance and told me that once I decided to resume university, the allowance stream would resume. It must have been extremely hard for my father to take such an action. However, I will forever be grateful to him for making this very difficult decision. I was left to myself. Thankfully, my brother and sister-in-law, Paula, lived in Ithaca, where Cornell is located, and they gave me much needed moral support. The burning question at the time was for me, so now, what do I do? Just lying on a sofa, what do I do, what do I do? The internet and Wikipedia did not exist at the time. However, the encyclopedia was king. For the next 12 months, I found myself selling Collier's Encyclopedia door to door in the Buffalo region. Let me tell you, for those of you who have not done it, selling encyclopedia door to door is a very hard job. I did not realize it at the time, but my encyclopedia phase taught me three important lessons. Number one, I learned the English language much better than when I was in a French lycée. I even learned how people swear at you when they don't want to be bothered at home by an encyclopedia salesman. <laughs> the second lesson, I, grew, I, I learned to understand consumer behavior and how to structure visual and sales presentation. I assure you, that much of the sales approach and motivation technique I use at Aldo today, and this lesson helped us a great deal. The third lesson, at Collier's Encyclopedia, a salary was based only on commission. A few weeks without a sales were very hard on the pocketbook and on the morale. With no safety net, you have no choice but to work hard and to persevere. You have to keep up your morale and find the energy every single morning to go and knock at those doors to sell an encyclopedia. It was hard. After 12 months of Collier's Encyclopedia, I treated myself to what turned out to be a very fortunate visit to Montreal. My sister, Anjani, and brother-in-law, Emile, who lived in Paris, were visiting the USA and they invited me to join them for a visit to Montreal. Well, 
I can tell you, I enjoy the city so much that I, that I thought of taking a chance and decided to apply to a university in Montreal. <clears throat> at the time, it was only at that time, I was told that it was easier to be accepted at Concordia, ex Sir George Williams, than at McGill. So I went to Sir George Williams, importantly, to find out that the last day for application had expired. Completely devastated, I could see those roads, you know, selling encyclopedia. I said, let me walk up Dry Street, turn west on Sherbrooke, all the way to McGill admissions office. My legs and my heart were very heavy. I feared the words. Importantly, I applied at McGill. I was accepted in their commerce program and received a bursary as well as a loan. God, I was relieved. It felt so good. So today, you can say that I could present myself to you as the one person that was not accepted at Concordia. <laughs> so, so now, finally, I made it to Concordia, and better late than never. Well, let me get back to my story. While at Miguel, I discovered life. I was happy. I was so proud and purposeful, and I had climbed over my first major life obstacle. Thankfully, my allowance was reestablished. People around me spoke French and English that by now I could understand perfectly. J'étais vraiment content. J'étais dans mon milieu. Et je dois vous dire qu'à l'époque, je n'aimais pas beaucoup la comptabilité mais j'adorais les cours d'économie et tout ce qui touchait le comportement de l'individu. Les leçons apprises chez Corlieu's Encyclopedia me donnaient la confiance de suivre et de participer pleinement aux cours que je désirais suivre. Finalement, je faisais quelque chose qui me plaisait et que j'avais choisi. With this frame of mind, I soaked up and enjoyed every moment of my three years at McGill. I was very fortunate to meet and make friends with people from around the world who were very different than I was, and who introduced me to new thoughts, new concepts, new ideology, and new ways of looking at established norms. We debated so long and for so many hours among ourselves, and it was, as Charles Nabour say, c'était le temps de la bohème. It was just beautiful. We were just talking, and it was a perfect world. In fact, we were bu building a dream society, challenging ourselves on a daily basis. After graduating, I could not wait to put into practice the thought that we had developed together. Instead of going back to France to follow known path, I decided to stay in Canada, where I felt I could participate in influencing change with the people that surrounded me and ultimately change society. My dream was to start a different kind of company. Yes, one that would be committed to making profit, but also a company that would strike a balance between profit and social conscious. A company that would be best in its field. A company also sensitive to the needs of its member and to society at large. Lesson learned during my encyclopedia phase and my time with my friend and professor at McGill were becoming clearer and clearer and it was paving the way. I could not stand sitting on the sideline. I had to be real, I had to be genuine. I had to act and to put into practice the thought that my friend and I had spent so many days discussing and evolving. The choice became clearer. I had to create my own company, my own environment. A company built not on fear, but on love, discipline, respect, integrity, 
and hard work. A passionate company, a fun company, a creative company, a company that my parents and friends would be really proud of me. A company united not by race, religion, origin, or language, but rather a company united by values such as respect, love, and integrity. To motivate the people, I needed to give them all the opportunity to reach their own individual full potential. The success of the company was not only to be shared by the shareholder, but also by everybody else involved, as well as society at large. We all had to cross the finish line together at the same time. Well, I can tell you today that with luck, discipline, hard work, and some smart, we have built a great company. Today, as you've heard, we 1,600 store in about 80 countries. We employ about 15,000 people. And I can tell you that a lot of my colleagues have reached their full potential, and we are improving and helping our community and the world at large. To you, graduating class, I encourage you to do not only what you like, but only what you like. If you lose sight of what you like, try to find it. Look to learn something from each experience, good or bad, you learn from each experience. Strive to create something that does not already exist. Care passionately for what you create. Don't be shy. Love what you're doing. When I look at all the difficulties, the barrier, the disappointment, the curves, and the change of direction, the winding road that is my life journey, I understand now that in fact, all those failure and impediment were really opportunity to excel and ultimately to enjoy life. I like to compare life to a path winding up a mountain. At the start of your life journey, you look in the horizon and dream of the beautiful panoramic view that you will enjoy once you reach the top of the mountain. As you progress, you encounter walls and various obstacles to reach the top of that mountain in order to enjoy life to its fullest. As you look back at the road that you have just climbed, you realize that all these obstacles, all those disappointments, all the fail failures were in fact opportunities to succeed and to reach your full potential. Today, we are living very exciting times. Attitudes are changing, norms are being challenged. Communication has never been as powerful. We are really going through a digital revolution that affecting every aspect of our life. There are huge opportunity right now. There are exciting years ahead of you and lots of opportunity. With the power of communication tool, the tectonic clash between the diverging reality of people around the world is instantaneous and violent. As we have seen in the last few years, a huge rise in youth and employment coupled with tremendous inequality around the world. People are conscious of those inequality and forces them to re rebel and refuse to accept their condition. This phenomenon has created social and political instability and has even created a, general, a generation of hopeless. So here is where you are, young graduate, that's where you come in. You must harness your talent and your passion to make a difference. Your voice needs to be heard. Do not be afraid to take chances. Create space to pursue your dream. No dream is big enough. If you fail, just get up and pursue your instinct and your heart and what your heart tells you. Do what you like, do what you love. Make sure to close the gap that exists right now. 
inspire each other, innovate, create the tool, the services, the mean to close this gap and make the world a better place. Prenez vos opportunités, créez un monde nouveau, un monde où chaque individu a une chance de s'exprimer, de réussir, un monde de justice et de compassion pour les plus faibles, un monde d'espoir et de fierté. I encourage you to do what you love. Never settle for half measure. Live your life to the fullest. Create your own vision to care not only for your welfare, but to care for the people around you. You will not err by tilting your scale slightly towards social consciousness. I encourage you to promote global citizenship and to ensure that the world is gentler and a better place for all of us, no matter our skin, color, or religion. Basically, to conclude, I just want to congratulate you, to wish you the most enjoyable life that you can imagine. Do not be afraid to dream, and you have big things to do, and you should be very, very excited. I wish for each one of you to enjoy your journey reach your full potential, and inspire the world. Thank you, and congratulations. On behalf of Dr. Belzadum of the JMMSB class of fall 2012, I'd like to first of all congratulate you on this honor you received this evening. And also particularly thank you for sharing uh, with us uh, your life journey. From your first impasse at Cornell to the tough love of your father, your dad, the moral support of your sisters and brother, your venture, short venture in the, in the encyclopedia business, the school of hard knocks that went with that, and also your salutary and uh, fortunate visit for all of us, I would say, here in Montreal years gone by. I'm glad to say, I must say, that we at Concordia have redeemed ourselves from uh, for the administrative mistake, somebody would want to call it, that was made back at Sir George Williams University in those days. Better be late than never, as the doctor said. Aldo, you remind me, uh, as I hear you speak, so inspirationally of this, of a saying I've heard uh, of the man who said, you can only leave footsteps if you choose to travel the unbeaten path. And certainly, you'll all agree that Aldo has done that. He also reminds me of a saying, apparently, I'm told, uh, I heard this at NYU when my daughter graduated many years ago. Somebody said that Albert Einstein once said to a crowd just like this, in an occasion like this where he was honored, uh, like Dr. Belson was tonight, he said something like, I don't know what you folks are going to do in your lives, but I know one thing for sure. The happiest amongst you will be those who decide to serve. And that is what Aldo has done all his life, and, and for that, on your behalf, I thank him for his inspirational message. Thank you, Aldo. And now, your turn. And I'll call upon Interim Provost and Vice President of Acad Academic Affairs, Madame Lisa Ostigi, for the conferring of degrees. I'll go get my cap, my magic cap, and I'll be back. say the funny cap, but it's a long one. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate, it's my pleasure to present to you the candidates for the doctoral and doctorate degrees, for the master and magisteriate degrees, and for the graduate diploma and certificates in the John Molson School of Business. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for their degrees, diplomas, and certificates.
Will the doctorate, doctoral, doctorate, master's and magisteriate, diploma and certificate candidates please stand. Look good. Okay, by the authority of the corporation and the Board of Governors of the University, I admit each of you to the appropriate degree, diploma, or certificate as approved by the Senate and certified by the Provost, with all the titles, honors, duties, rights, and privileges that go with these uh, degrees. À titre de chancelier et en vertu de l'autorité de la corporation et du Conseil des gouverneurs de l'université. Je vous confère les grades que vous postulez sur l'attestation du Sénat et je vous octroie tous les titres, honneurs, devoirs, droits et privilèges afférents à ces grades, diplômes ou certificats. Congratulations, félicitations. Please be seated. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, it's my pleasure to present to you the candidates for the bachelor and baccalaureate degrees in the John Molson School of Business. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for these degrees. Will the bachelor and baccalaureate candidates please stand? I see you guys didn't come alone. <laughs> By the authority of the corporation and the board of governors of the university, I admit each of you to the bachelor and or baccalaureate degrees as approved by the Senate and certified by the provost with all the honors, duties, rights, and privileges that are attached to these degrees. À titre de chancelier et en vertu de l'autorité de la corporation et du conseil du gouverneur de l'université, je vous confère les grades que vous postulez sur l'attestation du Sénat et je vous octroie tous les titres, honneurs, devoirs, droits et privilèges afférents à ces grades. Félicitations, congratulations. Please be seated. Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, you may notice a bit of movement up at the front where students seem to be leaving us. Don't be alarmed. In just a few minutes, they'll begin appearing on stage as soon as their names have been listed. Once everything is ready, you'll see our graduates begin to approach this lectern where I'm standing when, when their name is called out. Each student will then walk across the stage, stopping in the middle of the, uh, in the, middle of the stage to be formally capped with the mortarboard. Students receiving master's or doctorate degrees will be greeted by Dr. Graham Carr, our Vice President, Research and Graduate Studies. Barring any unforeseen technical difficulties, every student will appear in brilliant technicolor on these giant screens above the stage, where you'll see in full detail every graduate's name, academic major, and any distinctions or awards she or he may have won. The final stage in our process is for each student to finish crossing the stage to the far side to receive the actual diploma and a well-deserved de congratulations from the department, program chair, or from the dean. Graduates will then return to their seats until all diplomas have been handed out. We would ask that you remain seated until the end as a sign of respect for all of our deserving students. Respect for our graduates is paramount to us at Convocation. We know how much it means to, to you to see your graduate cross the stage, and I encourage you to show your support by cheering and clapping. However, please limit your expression of support so that other graduates can enjoy their moment in the sun too. Once your graduate has reached the center stage, it's time to leave some quiet space for our next star. One final word to our graduates. As you pause in the middle of the stage, 
please be sure to face our photographer who's stationed where she can get the best photograph of you so you'll get the best possible souvenir of this important event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm told we're ready to begin. So I'll leave you now and put the spotlight on our true stars of today. Uh, tonight, as convoca Convocation, Concordia's newest graduates. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Doctor of Doctorate in Philosophy in Administration. Dia Bandali. Ines Garguri. <laughs> Motaz Soliman. Marcelo Benhal Nepomuceno. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Master of Magisterate in Business Administration. Luis Aguilar Beltran. <laughs> Catherine Bedard. <laughs> Sanya Bestowak. Diana Camello. <laughs> Luai Shama. <laughs> Sarah Erhard Kandev. George El Cadiz. Robert Fury. Gabriela Gomez. Genevieve Granger. Sumit Kapoor. Srikant Kester. Juliana Kopp. Ting Chung Lam. Patrice Lemieux. David McPhail. Fatima Zora Maktoum.
Arham Nomani. Gentian Protodwari. Saeed Ramadan. Saeed Ramadan. Saeed Antoine Rezko. Fadi Sakal. Tulalop Richard Sodei. Shao Dong Sui. Sammy Tali. Rafael Mendes Souza Tavares. Jean Thibodeau. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Master of Magisterate in Science Administration. Damien Wolf. Joseph Alexander Carpini. Piryan Cheng. Ting Gao. Yan Gao. Fei Yu Huang. Ying Huang. Jameson Jones Doyle. <laughs> Mohammed K. Manish. Payam Masegi. Mr. Chancellor, I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the graduate diplomas in business administration chartered accountancy and investment management. Mahdi Bugrain. Erika Alexandra Garcia. Mark Alexander Chong. Min Dang Nugi. Marianne Gomong.
Suzanne Mintin Huyun. Dominic Leoni. Christopher Mariani. Alvaro Perez Aguera. Mr. Chancellor, I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Graduate Certificate in Business Administration. Liliana Saslavsky. I'm pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelors of Baccalaureate in Administration. Diana Asibio. Sammy Battery. Sammy Battery. Jonathan Bielan. Matthew David. Christy Caroline Fahmy. Mathieu Eli. Matthew Kowal. Sergio Lanzieri. Saya Lee. Sergio Mastro Stefano. Lorena Miranda. Mitchell Nadler. Farah Slayman. Daniel Sommer. Daniel Sommer. <laughs> Rolf Tam. Alan John Valdoria. Alan John Valdoria. Mohammed Zarab. <laughs> Mohammed Harun Zarif. <laughs> Melissa Zegarelli. I'm pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Baccalaureate in Commerce in the following departments, Accountancy, Decision Science and Management Information Systems, and Economics. Patrick Abdel Malik. Patrick Abdel -Malik. Julian, 
Julian Anicetto. Angela Asalone. Joshua Herbert Bertiz. Akada Agata Kapman. Leslie Cheng. Natasha Michaela Chocca. Amanda Kurzi, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Maxwell Ernest Dadouche. Yun Dao, with distinction. Baldeep Dillon. Fahad Diwan, with great distinction. Andrew Dolgar. Hossam El Tamimi with distinction. <laughs> Kaylee Farnsworth. Juan Fong. Serge Garabidian. Julian Gadi. Michael Vincent Junta. Sha Gong. Natasha Liang Grooves with distinction. Joanna Halasa. Juan Sebastian Henao. Johan Henriquez. Diogo Henriquez Rodriguez, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Anthony Hunt. Dan Huynh. Natalia Kilenko. Jason Lafreniere. Jason Lafreniere. <laughs> Emily Lazur Dao. Angelo Lo Giudice. Ahmed Majumdar with distinction. Thanks. 
Eleftheria Malandrakis. Irina Marinescu, with distinction, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Daniel Marino. Irina Miklachuk. Fatima Nishafa Mohammad Nizam. Reem Mosa. <laughs> Alessandro Motillo. Omar Mohika. <laughs> Maher Nahle. <laughs> Apilasa Nantakumar. <laughs> Kaman Ing. Christina Paklarian. <laughs> Paul Niroshan Polraja with distinction. <laughs> Megan Prendergast with distinction, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Maheen Rashid. Adam Romano. Rosalba Romo Figueroa. Theodora Sabbath. Lisa Shebas. Omar Smili. Omar Smili. <laughs> Katarina Torres. Catherine Trong. Theodros Fiseha Walde. Fu Hai Yang, with distinction, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Vincent Yip. Sin Lucy. Young Joe. Chuan Chuan Ju. Yekaterina Apanovich. Jorge Alfonso Bazan Reynoso. Jorge Alfonso Bazan Reynoso. Simon Chen. Simon Chen.
Tyler Katz. Scott Kennedy with distinction. Ahmad Khan. Alisa Mosca with great distinction. Elian Olgen. Lee Pan. Dorian Pantia, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Yelena Rudan. Joseph Sabah. Dorothy Sanki Simon, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Rui Jun Wang. Hamze Aude. I'm pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Baccalaureate in Commerce in the following departments, Finance, International Business, Management, and Marketing. Hadil Abu Khadra. Farhan Alavizadeh. Mu'ayyad Bahalwan. Christopher Barbieri. Christopher Barbieri. Sabrina Basile. Sabrina Basile. Arthur Burzak. <laughs> Natalia Child. <laughs> Benson Klish. <laughs> Cassandra Kufaro. Aki Liza Day. Alessandro Di Lollo. Alessandro Di Lollo. <laughs> Carl Eric Fournier. Gerardo Ganem Cuenca with distinction. Jordan Garay. Jordan Garay. Mustafa Gulam. Mustafa Gulam. Enrico Joyosa. Enrico Joyosa. Ben Sangimo, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Beris Gurel.
Haraj Hajjar. Mohsen Hassan with distinction. <laughs> Nesreen Jabali. <laughs> Carol Karim. Nader Khazari Poor. <laughs> Michael Kissel. <laughs> Carla K. Ladores. Yani La Montagne. <laughs> Key Wanle with distinction. <laughs> Sarah Eve Le Mieux. Sichuan Lee with distinction. Xiao Xiao Lee. V2 Lim. Yi Bing Liu. Amy Leong. Basil Moore El Zeki. Samuel Nasso with distinction, honors in finance. Yeah. Wei Fang Ng. Gertrude Noel. Michael David Paulos. <laughs> Valerie Payer. Kyle, Kyle Prilo Guayani, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Joseph Frisk. <laughs> Davy Riviere with distinction. <laughs> Alexander Robinson with distinction, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Maima Sefriwi. Eric Shantz. Eric Shantz. Bruno Favaro Silva. Bruno Favaro Silva. Solnoki.
Patumata Sumunu. Muhammad Talhuni. Christine Tauk. Abraham Wadi. Kashing Wan. Lu Tao Shi. Chin Shu. Huan Yen. Li Yao. Hon Lam Yu with distinction. Xiang Min Zhou. Ye Ting Zhao. Sao Yu Zhou. Lisa Abdel Hafiz. Yuana Alexandra Bratu. Sabrina Caggiano. Angela Fafa. Zachary Goldick, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Alexandra Ebrar, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Jian Wu Ji. Eric Lefebvre Berlin. Erola Manikoglu. <laughs> Alexandra Mierla. <laughs> Fatima Mursi. Solange Olivares Guevara. Jonathan Sweden. Jana Wehbi. Abdel Rahim Marwan Abu Saleh. Philip Barra. Justin Kassir.
Victoria Crofts, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. <laughs> Alana Decker, with distinction. <laughs> Laura Elkeslasi. Edward Farhat. <laughs> Timothy Gregoire. Megan Hastings. Megan Hastings, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Joanna Clapas. <laughs> Francois Langto Marcotte with distinction. <laughs> Simon Look. <laughs> Jonathan Malka. Charles Antoine Messier. Shandani Patel. Shandani Patel, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Niraj Patel. Sandra Soro. <laughs> Zoe Supino. <laughs> Tiffany Aces with distinction. Amber Cochrane. <laughs> Maria Dimitrova. <laughs> Claudia Ducra. <laughs> Patrick Dumphy. Paula Eskenazi, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Stephanie Etnegjian. Ronnie Faris. Melissa Ferrara. Sandra Jordan Winkle Reed, member of Institute for Cooperative Education. Simon Lachaume. Simon Lachaume. Fiona Lam Chanki. Daniel Levine. Daniel Levine. Moshe Lugasi. Moshe Lugasi. Alan Yu Shanglu, member of Institute for Cooperative Education.
Catherine Menardi with distinction. Amanda Markovic. Sandra Moshati. Don Nguyen. Stephanie Perrault. Kevin Ruel. Kevin Ruel. David Soro. Michelle Stavis. Christopher Vatney. Dimitra Zenakis. Basel Youssef. This being said, this, this being said, I think you, you, all you guys deserve a great hand of applause. So give it up for yourselves. Well done. Okay, now, uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce your uh, valedictorian, Dr. Marcello Nepomuceno. <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you a thing or two about Marcello. Dr. Nepomuceno defended his PhD dissertation, and I quote, anti-consumption, anti-consumption, the lifestyles of the disciplined materialists. He did this in June of 2012 under the supervision of Dr. Michel Laroche from the Department of Marketing. As a PhD student, he won several honors, awards, and grants. With, uh, with co-authors, he published teen peer-reviewed articles, two book chapters, and he has 30 papers in conferences and expositions. His research interests lie predominantly in the areas of consumer behavior, subject that Aldo would be interested, anti-consumption phenomenon, evolutionary psychology, and cross-cultural psychology. Dr. Nepomuceno is currently employed as an assistant professor in marketing at the Ecole Supérieure de Commerce de Paris. I would like to ask Dr. Marcello Nepomuceno to give his valedictory address. Doctor. Chancellor Menard, Chairman Hebert, President Shepard, Dr. Bezadun, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, families and friends, I am pleased and honored to address you today on behalf of the graduate students. Well, uh, I should start with a confession. Not so many weeks ago, I had no clue that the word valedictory existed. Uh, so when I got the invitation by email, I did what anyone would do in my case. I asked what the word meant to God's representative on the internet, that is Google, and, and when the results started to pop up on my screen, 
I was stunned. Really, it, it took me a while to believe that I was not getting a spam and was actually being invited to a huge honor. As I found out, a valedictorian is responsible to represent the graduates and be the farewell speech. But who am I to do that? Let's be honest. Uh, uh, very few of you know me, and I know almost none of you. So how can I say something that will resonate with all of you? Pour compliquer, j'ai besoin de le faire en anglais et en français, et comme vous pouvez entendre, mon accent est très fort dans les deux langues. So here I am, thousands of miles away from home, preparing a speech to an audience that I'm supposed to represent. At first, I felt I had to say, to say something clever. However, I quickly disregarded, disregarded this idea. Despite having successfully defended my thesis, I don't really feel that I have something uh, interesting to say to such a diverse audience. I would risk being so boring that uh, nobody would pay attention. Then another idea hit me. Uh, I thought about stating the achievements of our school and our students, uh, but that also felt strange because I could not make it feel like a farewell speech. Since Epiphany never hit me, I went online for inspiration. I started to watch several dozens of speeches and I stumbled upon one from Steve Jobs. A very successful one, I should say, because his commencement address has around 50 million views on YouTube. Interestingly enough, all he does is tell three stories. I will humbly tell you one. If you were to tell me six years ago that I would come to Montreal to do my PhD, my reaction would be, I wish. At that time, my line seemed settled. I was doing my master's. I had a stable and well-paid job. I could afford three vacations a year. And geez, I was only 25 and I, could, and I already had a retirement plan. All those things looked quite all right from outside, but something didn't feel right. I was not leaving my dream. So I decided to leave my comfort zone and, and I embarked here to Canada. When I arrived to Montreal, I remarked tout de suite que, que je n'étais pas le seul élève qui a voyagé de milliards de kilomètres pour réaliser un rêve. Dans cette ville multiculturelle et bilingue, c'est facile de trouver des étudiants qui ont quitté leur famille et les amis. We all know how difficult it was to get here. We know how many nights we didn't sleep. We know the challenge we had to overcome. I, for one, remember, remember the anxiety of getting bad grades in the beginning, in the first semesters. I remember going to class and thinking, wow, her English is so perfect. It took me a while to, to notice that the language was not the content of the class. The challenge we face are things of the past now. Uh, today, our dreams come true. Tonight, we celebrate our achievements with those who matter most. Tonight, we didn't just prove to others that we can get a diploma. We prove to ourselves that we can fight for our dreams. After the dust has settled, the question that will remain is, where will our dreams take us next? Well, that's up to us. Thank you, mother, father, and dear wife. Thank you, Concordia, and its amazing faculty. Merci, Montréal. Merci à tous. Good night. Thank you, Dr. Nepomuceno. I, I was interested in hearing that you had never heard a thing about a valedictorian address, but I'd say you're a quick read and you caught up pretty quickly. Um, thank you as well for sharing an idea that I think all of you will take away, that uh, the best way to pursue your dreams is to leave your comfort zone. And it served you well, and I'm sure it'll serve you all graduates who joined me in thanking your colleague for a, a great address. <laughs> and now, I'd like to ask uh, Provost, uh, Interim Provost Hostigi to give, her, to give us her closing remarks. Lisa? Colleagues, dear friends, graduating class, chers diplômés, mesdames et messieurs, merci d'être venus en si grand nombre pour partager avec nous la joie de nos diplômés. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Thank you so much for being here to celebrate the success of the class of 2012. Many of you have been fortunate tonight to have friends and family join you to celebrate in our celebration. If family and friends could not be in the audience with you tonight, they are here in spirit. Perhaps even watching the ceremony live on the, our website. Some may be doing that in the middle of the night, half a world away, because it's indeed a special evening. Graduates, this will always be your university and we want you to stay connected. As graduate students, if you choose to stay on or return to Concordia later, as alumni, as potential community partners, partners in industry with students, as potential faculty members, and maybe as parents of future Concordia students. Many people at Concordia have helped you on your path to get to this point today, tonight. In the audience, there are family and friends who've supported you on your journey. I invite you to stand up, turn around, and join me in a heartfelt thank you to your family and friends. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And I hope you follow us out and join us for a Vain Donnell in the foyer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 